folks, it's the Red, and welcome back to Let's Play Shantae! We are now ready to enter the Cackle Mound, courtesy of Ronnie Tops opening the way for us, so let's head on inside. And hooray, the awesome music is back! So this first room isn't too much trouble, just watch out for the uh, Arabian Zombies sticking themselves out of the ground. They're not too difficult to dodge, as we saw in the overworld. So a lot of this labyrinth will require us to be in monkey form. If we head on up here... ...immediately we'll find a warp squid. Yeah, the warp squids aren't too difficult to get in this particular labyrinth. Anyway, stick to the high road, because this is where we need to go. As we were advised by Roddy Tops when we first arrived here, if we stay in the shadows, the enemies won't pay us any mind. But you can still whack them from the shadows! So this is a nice way to gather up gems without actually getting damaged. So that's mildly amusing. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good way to get by enemies without really engaging them. Also, EPIC SLIDE! Also, what happened to her tail during that? Oh yeah, we also have these little spike platforms that if you're not paying attention, you'll walk straight into them. So don't go running around wildly in this labyrinth, and we're just going to ignore you for now. And here is the primary gimmick of this uh, particular labyrinth. Inside this jar we have an eyeball. Or at least we would if it would appear. <laughs> oh boy. Let's uh, exit and come back. There we go. Just hit this eyeball inside this little machine here. And a key will appear. They're not too difficult, but they will get a little trickier later on. But that's primarily what's going on in this labyrinth. This enemy is pretty easy to stun lock, but pretty... But if he gets an attack off, look out. Because they can be pretty nasty. Well, here's a particularly dark room. But we don't want to hang out up here, we want to go free-falling! And we're at the bottom. These little eyeball platforms will move in the direction that it's facing when you step on it. We're going to need to make use of this gimmick in the next room. Where we have to ride it across some instant death spikes. Do watch your footing here and don't be a monkey during this part. That was nearly bad. Ride it all the way across, and a 1-Up is waiting for us. One that I really needed. <laughs> what? And no sooner do I get this 1-Up, and then I immediately lose it. Good lord, this dash attack has caused more bad for me than good. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if I should have gotten it. When will I learn? Spoiler, never. But if you walk with the platform, it should not go ahead of you. So use that to your advantage, since you can go the same speed. Head it up now. Uh, this is not up. There we go. So just be mindful of how far you're going, and make sure the eye isn't going to take you directly into instant death spikes. Head over here for another warp squid. And then it's time to continue upward. Not into the spikes, that please. Low bridge! Trying to get the point across! But some gems wait for us at the end. And onward. 
Another call for the monkey. Another jar puzzle. Again, not particularly difficult, if you know where to hit from. Finding that sweet spot to get the eyeball inside the uh, statue can be pretty tricky. But it's not like you can shoot the eyeball off in a direction that will make it so that you can't solve it, so it's not too bad. Now this is what I call elevator music. Time to make our way to the right. A few jars with some loot. You're pretty much invincible during this part because this is all darkness and so the enemies can't hurt you. Oh, hello spike ball. Looks like some spider webs connected with uh, spikes on either side, and uh oh, watch out for the ghosties. That's why you don't want to let it get an attack off. Jerk. And we have more eyeball platforms. Any spikes around? Just on the floor. So let's head straight across. Thankfully, another one up. Let's see if I can hang on to it for longer than 10 seconds this time. Okay, we have us another eyeball puzzle. This one's going to operate a little differently, though. Once the eyeball gets in, it's looking up. This isn't actually the way we want it to be facing, so we have to knock it out of the machine and get it back in there, and facing the right direction. I'm not actually sure what determines what the correct direction is, but from what I've seen, if you just keep knocking it out and putting it back in, eventually it will be in the quote-unquote correct direction and then it will finally drop its key. This makes it a little irritating, but, uh... Oh well. But eventually, it does give us the key, once it's facing the girl statue. Hmm, maybe that has something to do with it. Anyway, we'll just head back down. And continue our trek downward. I'm sure I could just free fall during this part, but hey, they're gonna give us an elevator, so why not? And here we are with a little more health that we don't need. Seriously, there's no enemies during this part, so why is it giving us so much health? Open up this door, and onward we go, into more spikes. Sometimes I just find myself randomly jumping, hoping to avoid them. Whoa! Like that. Anyway, when that platform reappears, we'll head on up. Any time now. There it is. Okay, we're gonna want to go up. And here we go. Continue up, and you'll find another warp squid. Now let's follow it properly. probably have an enemy to take out here. Yep, this thing is a pain.
You can't exactly stun lock this thing, even though it looks like you can, but... This thing likes to hop around so freaking much, but as long as you keep whipping it, it won't get an attack off. I'm having a hard time getting those hits in because it keeps hopping around so much. But once you get a feel for how far it jumps around, getting su successive hits in isn't too bad. Anyway, you beat it, get five gems, and let's become a monkey so we can get up this wall. Because I did see a big jar up there. Another one up, lovely. Can sure use some health now. And what do we have going on in here? Why, it's another eyeball puzzle. Well, that was quick and easy. Alright, head it down. Oh! Alright, making pretty adequate progress. Come on, get up there. And here, over here, we'll find a full health refill. And another, uh, bat woman that's going to need to be punched in the face. Or slashed in the face, whichever. You can probably get two hits in per pass, but don't expect much more than that, because it does immediately jump as soon as you hit it. And just hit these skulls as they solidify themselves. I recommend being a girl for this part. You can jump just high enough to get up there, though you can get more reach as a monkey. I'm not sure what happens if you don't hit them soon enough, but, uh... I imagine it's something you probably don't want. I mean, they're skulls! What have skulls ever indicated something nice? Oh, the other way. There we go. And no problem. Make sure there's no loot here. Okay, going down. Well, where are all those webs? <laughs> I guess we'll find out soon enough. And I'm just ignoring you. Heading on down, and here is the Guardian Genie. I'm gonna join you in the cage. Okay, then I'll walk out. Thank you for freeing me! I'm a Guardian Genie! Blah blah blah, here's the new dance. It's down and A. Okay, and now it's time for our new transformation. That genie's a spy! Durr. Yes, it's our new spider transformation, and like the monkey, it's used to climb up walls, but unlike the monkey, this one climbs up walls in the background! Exciting! Its usage is, without its corresponding talisman, is very circumstantial. This is probably going to be the most use, least used, um of all the transformations. Pretty much all you need it for is climbing up walls and nothing else. Also, check out this arrow here. Almost like it's trying to tell us something. But yeah, spider transformation, not particularly useful until you have the talisman, but uh, we'll cover that when we get to that. For now, let's see if we can get up to here. As it seems to be prompting us to do so. There we go. Doing so, and we get to a warp squid. That's number four for this labyrinth. 
Anyway, now that we have the uh, transformation, it's time to head on back up and use it for its intended purpose. Okay, so now we're back at the big slide room. But this time, instead of using the slide, we're going to use our new transformation. Or we're going to try to, at least. I gotta get the timing right on these things. Anyway, become a spider and climb along this wall here. And we'll be able to get to a new passage. Where we'll find yet another eyeball puzzle. This time with two eyes. Hit them into each eye socket. But they're not quite looking the right way, are they? There is a wall right up here. Some sort of thing hanging over its head. Could be a clue as to where we need to have these eyes facing. No, not that way. Up looks more right. And just like that, we get another key. And then we'll use the spider to get back across. Otherwise, you'd end up taking the slide, and then you'd have to ride the elevator all the way back up again. And that's no good for anyone. Let's go ahead and get changed back. As long as we're in the shadows, that's really the safest place to do transformations. Anyway, time to start making our way towards the boss chamber. Might as well see if there's any help here. Though I'm sure it will give us an opportunity to refill that right before the boss. Ooh. Anyway, spider here. And up the walls. It will automatically jump to the next wall if you are holding up. This area is quite webby. And here's our full health refill after they gave us enough back there. Kind of strange that we're still in a shadow despite being in the light right now, but whatever. Onward. Check it out! The Simmerstone! And Risky isn't here! That's funny. This is the Simmerstone chamber, but no sign of Risky Boots. If I'm quick enough... Ah, oh, you slowpoke. Ha! Nice try, girly girl! But this Simmerstone comes with me! Its magical fire will keep my water boiling forever! Yeah, but you'd still have to refill it with water. What? Not again! Aye! Yes, it's deja vu all over again. And now it's boss time. And if I'm totally honest, he's pretty simple. Although this is one of the trickier ones in the game. Yes, I know, I just contradicted myself. Basically, you want to attack this thing in the chest while it's poked out. Hit it enough times and eventually it will curl into a ball and then you need to jump over it. It can go up and down across the walls. Basically, wait for it to come out of the wheel and then start wailing on it again. This thing is quite durable, so this fight could drag out a good bit. Oh, and don't walk into it. He's nice enough to face you when he comes out of the wheel, at least. That wheel doesn't come out at the same speed every time, either, so watch out for that. Sometimes it'll come flying at you, and that's a good way to get yourself hit. Uh, case in point. Well, ah, wasn't quite quick enough. Stop spinning around.
Yeah, sometimes they'll back up and make you have to walk up to him in order to get another hit in. And he changes his speed sometimes, so while you might be anticipating him to come at you fast, he'll instead go slow and then you'll end up landing on top of him. Because they don't like to play nice. So it's a good idea to back up a little bit of a ways so that you can figure out what he's going to do and then react accordingly. Yeah, careful that he doesn't walk into the wall and then turn around and walk into you, because while he's charging at you, he can't be attacked. Oh! Couldn't quite get my jump off in time. Let's go for a charge! I'm pretty sure the charge doesn't do any additional damage. But it's a good way to get get an attack off, perhaps while he's bolting towards you. And down he goes. Finally. And we will claim the Simmerstone. I think Shantai's top turned blue there. I did it! I got the Simmerstone! Well, I knew with my help you'd make out okay. Make out okay? Make it out okay, maybe? So what's the reason for collecting these stones anyway? Kind of a dangerous hobby, isn't it? I don't have any choice! Risky Boots is going to use them for some sort of doomsday weapon. I've already kept her from getting the Dribble Stone, the Golem Stone, and now the Simmer Stone. If I can head her off one last time, Scuttletown and the others should be safe. That girl's bad news, alright. She's one of the reasons. We move our caravan each night. In fact, we're moving out in the morning. So if you want to visit me again, you'll have to track our caravan down first. In the meantime, you should head for Mount Pointy. Why, what's there? The Twinkle Stone! Well, you sure know a lot about these stones. You've got the other three, and that's the only one left. Er, you don't have any warmer clothes, do you? Why would anyone want to wear warm clothes? I mean, <laughs> style? Heh, <laughs> no reason. See you round! And yeah, like Ronnie said, the caravan will be moving. So, if we return to the same point that we initially came to it, it's not actually going to be there. Which could make it a little annoying to find it so they can put the warp squids in place. But once I get those warp squids in place, getting to that town will be much easier. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and call it a video here. In the next part, maybe we'll track down the caravan. But then it's off to go to the next town that she didn't even bother to tell us to go to. But I know where we need to go and we will address that in the next video. I'll see you then.